Hey car fans, I just got back from a long holiday trip with my family, which means I don't have a typical DIY tech tip video for you today. So I was going to make a sort of 2018 progress year in review type video, but rather than look backward, I thought it would be cool to, to look forward and look at some cars that have inspired me in 2018 and give you a little glimpse of where this project is going. It's kind of a 2018 hot rod market review. Garage time. Occasionally, I like to watch cars on bringatrailer.com. It's a very Porsche friendly website and it's a great way to see what other people are building. Usually it's got great descriptions. Sometimes they have video. The commentary is usually really good. I've chosen eight cars that appeared on bringatrailer.com in 2018, and these are all similar builds to mine. Call them Porsche hot rods, resto mods, long hood, back dates, R group, whatever you want to call it. The prices are all over the place. So I'm not going to spend too much time discussing price, but I will use price as sort of a measure of desirability. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to try to analyze these cars and try to understand what makes a few of these cars more desirable than the others and what are those build trends. So stay tuned. First up is this beautiful silver car that has actually started out as a 74 Carrera, which is a collector car before all the modifications. This build was commissioned by Renline, so it's loaded with their parts and it's a turbo long hood. It has the turbo wide body flares, uh, front and rear all in steel. Rims are 16 inch. It uses a modified and widened front steel bumper to include a large oil cooler in the front. Headlights are LED. Oddly enough, there's no roll bar in this car. Modified sport seats, the Momo Prototipo steering wheel, RS door cards. The hood is an authentic long hood from you know earlier than 73, 73 or earlier. It has the hole in the hood for the center mounted gas tank. It's unlikely people actually put gas through the hole. I'm sure you almost always open the hood first. It looks like the oil cooler in the front is vented to the wheel wells, probably to cool the brakes. The intercooler is a custom uh, modified intercooler. You can see the turbo. Um, it does have heat exchangers though. Rear coil over shocks. These trailing arms are actually 930 trailing arms too. So lots of turbo parts on this car. The front underside is very clean. Coil overs on the front as well. These are modified spindles, bump steer kit, and some extra gussets here on the uh, front struts. 930 brakes with large rotors. These are kind of the backdate kit, so to speak. All the parts that went into this build. Everything is steel with the exception of the rear bumper and the rear deck lid. The flares are pretty wide. You can see the workmanship is really nice on this car. We go about 165,000. Um, a lot of money went into this car. It's got tons of upgrades. It's beautifully done. But uh, let's go to the next one. We'll come back and, and look at all these cars. Okay, this car is another RSR style. Started as a 1974, just like mine. This one has a 3.2 liter, 15 inch tires, although the rubber is a lot taller on these. Interesting choice on the seats. These are low back seats. Interior on this one is mostly stock. It has an earlier 380 millimeter deep dish uh, Porsche wheel. Gauges are stock for, it looks like, I think those gauges are stock for 1974. The front is uh, cleaned up, very presentable. The hood uh, is, I believe this is a fiberglass hood, and this is a relatively stock 3.2 liter Carrera engine. The front undercarriage looks, you know, pretty clean. It's kind of a driver. Interesting to note, it's the RS front bumper, but there's no oil cooler behind it. It's kind of, kind of for show here. Motor. 
So this car, in, in my opinion, is sort of a, instead of a wolf in sheep's clothing, it's kind of the sheep in the wolf's clothing. I think this is a relatively stock drivetrain for the size of the uh, tires on this car. And I'm sure it's a really fun car to drive. This yellow car is really well done. Interesting to this one, it's, it is a back eight, uh, 73 and a half, 3.2 liter Carrera engine. This car retains its narrow body uh, rear flares, which is cool. Good fitment in the front, it has the RS bumper, real similar to my car. I don't see the gasket um, between the, the hood and the bumper. Interior is uh, fully you know, covered in leather, it has the RS door cards. These are GTS classic uh, aftermarket seats. It has the silver dot gauges, aftermarket radio. This is the uh, stock 3.2 liter engine. The description says it has the Steve Wong chip in it. SSI heat exchangers, really clean underneath. Suspension has modifications too. These are uh, modified spindles for height. I believe these are the S brakes. Power output on this one is 212 horsepower, 200 feet pounds of torque. So this was sold earlier in the year for 110,000. It's got quite a little bit more modifications than the previous car. It has some elephant racing, um, suspension bushings, tie rod kits, RSR valving in the, uh, in the shocks, front strut brace, the bump steer kit, also a Wevo 915 shifter. So another really nice car. And now we have another RSR style Back date, this one's also 1974, 2.8 liter, but highly modified, reported to have 280 horsepower, twin plug motor, widened uh, wide body flares, LED headlights, through the body fuel filler. And it also has a kind of aftermarket oil filler, kind of like the 72s had, but instead of having a door, it's got this open cap on there. Similar steering wheel to the previous car, gauges are uh, still 74. These, I think, are the red line strut tower braces, diagonal bars. It's a carbureted engine, twin plug. You can see the uh, headers on the bottom here. This one does appear to have the, you know, has the RS front bumper, and it does look to have an oil cooler in the front. The, mod the front has been modified for extra clearance and air ducting to go underneath the car. So this car um, was bid to 105,000, um, did not sell. But this was sold on Bring a Trailer earlier in the year, I believe for 121000 And the story was that the owner bought this car and it was just a little bit too, too rough, too raw to enjoy on the street. Felt like it was a little bit creaky, noisy. You know, the suspension modifications made it a little bit less comfortable than this particular owner, owner wanted. Okay, here we have a 1971 Porsche 911T. This has a 3.4 liter uh, motor that reportedly makes 270 horsepower. It has fender flares, SC fender flares added to it. A weld-in roll bar. This car has the painted black Fuchs, has a sport muffler. These are uh, fiberglass ST seats with uh, harnesses and harness bar on the back. In the front, it has the Carrera RS um, large extra capacity plastic gas tank. And plus, of course, a lot of red line parts in the front, strut brace, smuggler's box cover, and uh, wiring cover. They've relocated the battery to the smuggler's box. The 3.4 liter motor has PMO carburation. The dash looks correct for the 1971 silver dot gauges. Okay, this car is really nice, pretty heavily modified. It sold for 125,000 um, plus 5,000 fees in July. Interesting thing about this car too is it still has the uh, 901 transmission from 1971. Okay, next up we have this 1982 RS Tribute, 3.6 liter from a 993. The front wheels are 16 inch, the rear wheel is a custom 17 inch. It has the H4 headlights, Carrera RS front bumper, fiberglass. The hood, the fenders, the front bumper are all fiberglass on this car. Fiberglass ducktail and fiberglass rear bumper. 
has some Recaro seats. I think it's a Wevo shifter, Renline floor plates. Looks like a Momo steering wheel with some stock gauges. Here's the 3.6 motor with headers and custom exhaust. Looks like they're using the uh, Porsche Boxster front brakes. So this car is the lowest priced one in the lot. It has a very expensive engine in stock form. Must be a lot of fun to drive. Um, build quality on this one's a little bit uh, lower than some of the others. I think it's mostly due to a lot of the fiberglass parts. Okay, this, this car is actually a 912. It's a 1968 short wheelbase 912. Um, it weighs 1,975 pounds and produces 270 horsepower with a 3.2 liter Porsche Carrera engine. It also um, has the updated 915 five-speed manual gearbox with a limited slip differential. The build quality on this car looks really nice. You can see the front gasket and everything is present here in the front. It has lightweight plexiglass windows, at least in the rear quarters. Some more modern seats, racing style seats with, uh, with harnesses. Looks like it has a bolt-in roll bar in the back. Very common uh, these days through the hood fuel filler. Another PMO carbureted hot rod. This is a beautiful uh, M&K dual outlet sport muffler. Lots of modifications on this car. You can see the zinc plated um, A-arms. It also has raised spindles with adjustable uh, bump steer kit. You can also see here that it has a through the body uh, sway bar. So this car was heavily modified. The build quality is very nice on this heart car. It is a 912, but that didn't seem to prevent it from going up to 165,000. Okay, last up but not least, these are in no particular order, is this 1980 SC tribute car, made to look like an RS with the ducktail. It's had the um, SC sunroof welded in, fiberglass rear bumper, sitting on 15 inch wheels, another prototypo wheel in the interior. These are the stock uh, 1980 gauges and dashboard looks fairly stock. Reupholstered seats here. This motor was a 3.0 um, from the SC era and bored out to 3.2 or uh, swapped with 3.2 pistons and cylinders. Another engine with uh, 46 millimeter PMO carburation. Looks like it has the SSI uh, heat exchangers with another sport muffler. Here's another car that does use the RS bodywork in the front, but no oil cooler in the center mounted oil cooler. It does have an upgraded oil cooler behind the uh, horn grill here. This hood is the short hood modified to a long hood, similar to what I did, just a little bit different approach. Looks pretty nice. Here's a bare steel picture of that welded in sunroof. So this car was recently bid to $84,000 on Bring a Trailer. It did not sell. I did look into the comments on this one. There, there was some suspicious parts used in the engine rebuild, and I think that turned some people off. Um, plus, it also appeared to me that this car isn't 100% complete. It looks like it needs a few uh, final touches on it to really command a six-figure price. Okay, so prices ranged in this small group of eight cars from $60,000 or $61,000 to $160,000. And you can tell that there were some differences in the, in the cars, how much they've been upgraded. What, the, what they used to start with and the build quality. The one thing that's interesting I thought was the earlier cars seem to do better than the, the later cars. And uh, it's a little counterintuitive on a hot rod. These cars are all made to look the same. So I thought I would, with this limited group, try to discover what the trends are, what really drives the high price of some of these cars, especially the earlier ones. This chart shows the price versus the year for the eight cars that I showed earlier. The one car that stands out is the 1975. Then I thought it would be cool to plot the horsepower versus price and there's it's really scattered. I can't really make out any trends here. Um, there's a lot to be said for the cars that just took a late model engine, a 3.2 or 3.6 and put it in the car in stock form and just enjoyed it. Same is true for the rear wheel. I thought that the RSR cars or the turbo look cars would have more of an impact on price, but there's really no clear 
clear path or, or clear statement as to the wider cars do better. Some of the narrow body car, cars, including that 912, did really well. So this is showing that horsepower and rear width don't really have a strong correlation with price. And this one's a little bit more subjective by me. I tried to put a scale on the number of upgrades each car had, whether it's engine upgrades, suspension upgrades, um, body upgrades, interior upgrades. The most upgraded car was probably the first one, that Redline Turbo. So that, that would be a 10. And you can see a trend in price, sort of the more upgrades the car has, what I call um, jewelry in some cases, especially with suspension and shiny Redline type parts, that did have an impact on the sales price or desirability. I did the same scale of one to 10 on build quality. Now build quality is even more subjective. It is difficult to determine without seeing the car how well it was built. But I did my best looking at the pictures and looking at some of the people that are looking at comments about people who have seen the car. And I did my best to do that. This does show the strongest correlation with price. So I made a, a video on build quality in the past. There's a link to it right here. That is why my car is taking so long. The build quality portion of it and the gaps and the, you know, the, the fit and finish is, is very important to me. You know, not because I'm a collector and I care about the price or I'm gonna flip the car. That's not what motivates me. What motivates me is seeing a high quality car and enjoying it knowing that I did the work. So that's it for this week, guys. I know I'll be uh, back in the garage next week doing some more DIY stuff. So we'll see you then. Take care.